Welcome to Sri Lata Organic Farming. Let us see the white grub, which is also called root grub management using entomopathogenic nematodes. This is white grub, which is becoming major pest nowadays. It uh, damages roots in the soil and leads to the death of the plants. This is the white grub infected with the uh, nematodes. Why the CPN is considered as a good biopest, biopesticide? The nematodes are having chemoreceptors. So they can go to the target insect by using these chemoreceptors. That is whenever insect is uh, uh, respiring, based on the CO2 carbon dioxide levels, they can move, travel and reach the insects. And they can quickly kill the target insect. Broad host range. Entomopathogenic nematodes can kill so many types of insects. Easily cultured. It's uh, easy to culture entomopathogenic nematodes. Even the farmers, they can produce uh, at their level. Compatible with many pesticides. Because uh, nematodes, uh, they are not belonging to the either insects or fungi or bacteria. That's why commonly used pe pesticides uh, uh, cannot kill these uh, entomopathogenic nematodes. Easy delivery system by spraying EPN suspension or, or through irrigation system also they can be given. Safe to vertebrates, plants and non-targets and environmentally safe. So in all aspects to the human beings and other vertebrates, these are entomopathogenic means they can cause disease only to the insects. Long term control, the control of uh, Pests using entomopathogenic nematodes, it is chain-like. That's why it is a long-term control. Exempt from registration requirement. If you see other biopesticides like fungi, bacteria or anything, they are to be registered with the CIBRC. So entomopathogenic nematodes, as of today, they are exempted from the registration by CIBRC. This is the life cycle of entomopathogenic nematodes. So basically, these entomopathogenic nematodes, they infect a larva. They enter into the larva using whatever holes are available on the larva, spiracles or mouth, anus or anything. They enter into the larva. There, they release the bacteria, which is uh, inside the entomopathogenic nematode. The bacteria is uh, actually the killing agent. The bacteria kills the insect. It, it uh, digests the internal contents of the insects. The entomopathogenic nematodes, they eat the internal contents of the insects and again they swallow the internal contents along with the bacteria. Again, the bacteria and uh, um, entomopathogenic nematodes, they live, they live together. They, the uh, a symbiotic relationship they are having. Bacteria kills the insect and supply food to the EPN. EPN carries bacteria from one insect to the other insect. Like that, they are having a symbiotic relationship. The points of entry of these entopome pathogenic nematodes to insects are mouth, spiracles, anus, skin, scale of the insect, anything. I told you, now these entomopathogenic nematodes are having symbiotic rela uh, relationship with the uh, bacteria. Majorly two uh, families of uh, entomopathogenic nematodes causes diseases to the insects. Uh, first family is the Steiner nematidae, uh, genus Steiner nema. Steiner nema is associated with Xenorhabdus. The species, the bacteria uh, is Xenorhabdus. The entomopathogenic nematode heterorhabditae family genus heterorhabditis it is associated with the bacteria photorhabditis so here broadly if you see there are two important entomopathogenic nematodes two genera uh, first one is Steiner nema which is associated with the xenorhabditis bacterium second is heterorhabditis which is associated with photorhabditis bacterium these uh, entomopathogenic nematodes, where they are available, you may be having a question. Mostly, all these entomopathogenic nematodes are present in the soil or in the infected insects in the field. Either they can be obtained from soil by using a baiting technique. Bait is again an insect. Here, an insect is a bait from infected insects in the 
field also they can be extracted. Extraction process includes collection of the soil samples, baiting with Galleria mellonella, greater wax moth. This is Galleria mellonella is the greater wax moth, the larva. Uh, mostly uh, the matured larva of Galleria mellonella are used uh, to extract uh, the entomopathogenic nematodes. Then uh, after some time when the larva gets infected, the infected larva are to be collected. Extraction of the EPN from infected larva, reinfection and reisolation of EPNs, store in distilled water for further use. That is the normal procedure. You can see in vivo production. In vivo production means production inside the host. Which are all the hosts of the entomopathogenic nematodes? Many insects are the hosts of the entomopathogenic nematodes. But most commonly used host for the production of EPN is the Galleria mellonella. Even our common host Corsera cephalonica which is used for production of predators and parasitoids that also can be used to produce EPN. There is no problem. Even the white grub also can be used. There is no issue in using white grub also as a host. Collected white grubs can be used to multiply further EPN. Here the Galleria mellonella larva, greater wax moth larva, in, uh, ready for infection. Second one is EPN infected Galleria mellonella larva. The EPN infected larva are called cadavers. Cadavers, uh, they will not give any foul smell or anything. They are little hard and they, are, they can be stored very easily. So, third uh, photo which you are seeing is the harvesting of EPN from Galleria mellonella larva uh, using white trap. So, baiting and isolation of soil samples and white trap method of isolation, you see there are simple methods, baiting, raising or uh, production of the larva or collection of the larva and uh, infecting them with the EPNs, either heterorhabditis or stinger nema. And then when they become cadavers, extracting those EPNs uh, using a filter paper and water and using those uh, EPNs to spray or otherwise directly the cadavers also can be used in the field. How to know whether the larvae are infected with EPN or not? Very simple is stinger nema infected larvae uh, they appear yellowish brown because they are associated with the Xenorhabditis species of the bacterium that gives the yellowish brown color. Heterorhabditis is associated with Photorhabditis species of the bacterium because of the bacterium they appear brick red in color. Insects dying of other causes actually if uh, uh, with instead of EPN if the insects are dying with uh, some other uh, bacteria or fungi or anything they give smell that is the indication they become blackish and smell uh, putrid but cadavers uh, they are very fresh and they will not give any smell so color variation as we discussed stinger nema infected larva yellowish in color uh, heterorhabditis infected larva red in color brick red in color because of the bacterium photorhabditis species the mutualistic bacteria if you see the color is because of the mutualistic bacteria which are appearing inside the nematode. You see how the color is uh, different. So mass production of EPN larger scale in vitro production. There are various media available dog biscuit media, chicken, offal media, oats media, plant based media. But uh, the problem is uh, in vitro production after producing EPN whether they are having inside the bacteria or not is a uh, Question actually, if the bacteria is not entering into the nematodes, then they, they are not having that much efficacy to kill the host insect. Nematodes cannot kill the host insect. Only if they are having bacteria inside them, they, if they release the bacteria, then only they can kill the insect. That's why large scale production, even though fermenter, uh, using fermenter, they can be produced, but natural production, in vivo that means inside the host insect is the best option and even the large scale production farmers cannot do at their level only in, vi in vivo production inside the host they can do themselves. So the major goals of nematodes uh, maintenance of the quality, enhancement of the storage and stability, 
improvement in ease of transport and use reduction of transport cost enhancement of nematode survival during and after application are important many formulations are available uh, desiccated cadavers they can be directly used uh, in the soil capsules are also available macro gels are available they can be used for soil or foliar uh, sprays also calcium alginate gel beds for soil application those are also available beds are also available in many ways the entomopathogenic nematodes can be applied in the field by using uh, the foliar application technique soil application broadcasting spray drip drench optimum moisture temperature soil type are important because nematodes are aquatic in nature moisture is must without moisture they cannot survive they cannot tolerate even extreme temperatures also optimum temperature is to be uh, there in the environment soil type also they cannot bear very heavy soils and all here you see infected uh, larvae inside uh, lakhs lakhs of uh, nematodes are present inside the uh, insected infected white grub they come out and again they search for the host insect and they attack freshly the other insects that's why the reaction is like a chain reaction infected journals from infected helicorpa armigera larvae epn you see how thousands 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 lakhs of uh, nematodes are coming out thank you with this uh, i think you can understand the importance of uh, entomopathogenic nematodes in the pest management in organic farming let us see further which are all the biological control agents which are useful in organic farming in the further sessions thank you signing off srilata